So Donald Trump in even bigger trouble, another Washington Post story about more obstruction of justice. <laughs> As you see this story and I, and, I, and I read you some of the details of it, just think about what if this were Obama? What would the Republicans do? How quickly would they start impeachment proceedings? How many investigations would already be not only underway, but nearly concluded? And then go one step further and think, what if Hillary had won? And Hillary Clinton asked people to obstruct an investigation into her corruption. What do you think the Republicans would have done? Let alone the media, let alone everyone else. So now with that context, let me tell you what's happening. Washington Post reports that President Trump asked two of the nation's top intelligence officials in March to help him push back against an FBI investigation into possible coordination between his campaign and the Russian government, according to current and former officials. Now, if that's true, it's the textbook definition of obstruction of justice. There's an investigation into you and your campaign on whether you colluded with the Russians and you asked two intelligence heads to stop the investigation. Lock him up. Okay, more details. Trump made separate appeals to the director of the National Intelligence, Daniel Coates, and to Admiral Michael S. Rogers, the director of National Security Agency, urging them to publicly deny the existence of any evidence of collusion during the 2016 election. Now, both of those are deeply conservative right wingers. And to my surprise, they said no. So credit where credit is due to them. Coates and Rogers refused to comply with the requests, which they both deemed to be inappropriate, according to two current and two former officials. So that's four different sources confirmed this happened. You'll see Coates, his own quote in a second, which goes a long way towards confirming this story. But let me continue with more details. Trump's conversations with Rogers was documented contemporaneously in an internal memo written by a senior NSA official, according to the officials. Okay, so two things, Rogers, the Obama administration warned against him. He's that right wing and and they warning, the other guy they warned against was Michael Flynn. But even Rogers says, no, no, I'm not gonna stop an ongoing FBI investigation for you. Of course not, that would be wildly illegal. And he, just like James Comey goes, we have to take an internal memo on this. Because I don't want to get caught with my hand in the cookie jar and people think that I helped to collude to stop investigations. Write a memo saying the moron president asked me to do obstruction of justice. Now, we'll see what the memo says. That is obviously my interpretation based on the things that I am reading you. You could want, and we'll have a link to the Washington Post article. Please read it for yourself. Read any other material you have on it. We want you to do your own research, come to your own conclusions. And most importantly, let's get all those memos. Let's get the Comey memo, let's get the Rogers memo and find out what the president actually said. And if Trump was stupid enough to record all this, great, let's get the tapes. Now, meanwhile, of course, the Republicans are now backpedaling. Jason Chaffetz, who originally said, give me my subpoena pen, because he's gonna subpoena the James Comey memo. Now going around saying, no, 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 we should go the opposite direction and we should put the leakers in jail. Cover up, cover up, cover up, cover up. It's not gonna work. And then everyone who helped him cover up is gonna be in a world of trouble. All right, let's keep going. Rogers was taken aback, but tried to respectfully explain to the moron, no, I mean explain why he could not do so, the official said. For one thing, he could not comment on an ongoing investigation. Rogers added he would not talk about classified matters in public, okay? So even these deep right wingers, the moron in chief comes up and goes, okay, can you block that investigation? They're like. No, no, Mr. President, I can't block that investigation and I can't believe you just asked me to, right? So look, I don't know if he's just stupid or corrupt or both. I, no, I largely know, both. It's obvious that he's desperate, desperate to stop the investigation. Gee, I wonder why you're desperate to stop an investigation. If you're investigating something I didn't do, have at it, Hoss, right? You're not gonna find anything unless you make it up, right? So in his case, he knows they're gonna find something. He's like, Comey, stop it, stop it, oh, damn it, Comey won't stop it. Okay, Coates, Rogers, guys, you make him stop it. Oh, You guys won't do it either, fine, you're fired, Comey. Oh, it's because of Hillary Clinton, Oh, I'm on TV. No, it was because it was the Russian investigation. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. He's so, look, this guy worked dozens of articles about this. We covered it during the campaign. He worked with mafia figures on a lot of his construction. Again, imagine if it were Obama. And Obama in his career before running for president, 
had worked with the Bloods and the Crips on some business projects. <laughs> Do you think he would have been elected? Let alone, you know, all the other things that they did to him. Okay, they investigated him on nothing anyway, right? This guy, what's he doing? He's doing what he learned from the old days. You got a construction job, you go to Tony, you got a Tony, you know what I'm saying? And then you told Tony, cut it out. Now he's president, doesn't realize there's a thing called rule of law and he has to actually abide by it. So he's like, hey, Roger Scoots, why don't you do what I tell you to do, right? And what do we have? Oh, people have got, kind of gotten used to it. Like, oh, yeah, well, of course, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> deeply, deeply, deeply corrupt. He's always been corrupt. From those construction projects to the undocumented immigrants he hired over and over again, and then he fired when he got caught, to Trump University, to every scam he's ever run, let alone the, all the money he borrowed from the Russians. You think we can't track the money, you schmuck? I can't wait for you to be let out in handcuffs. Okay, former senior intelligence official says, the problem wasn't so much asking them to issue statements. It was asking them to issue false statements about an ongoing investigation. He is in a world of trouble. Anyone who doesn't realize it, and I'm telling you, now I see Marco Rubio and Jeb Bush come out. What did I tell you? The guys that he wronged on the Republican side, when they smell blood in the water, they're gonna come out and start shiving him. Rubio is like, ah, he doesn't know what he's talking about with Israel. He's never gonna get a peace deal. Jeb Bush comes out and says, I told you, it's the chaos president. I warned you, right? Because they know, they got a sense, this guy's going down. Senior White House official says, um, <laughs> they, they were wondering. Uh, they asked these guys, uh, Coates and Rogers, can we ask him to shut down the investigation? Are you able to assist in this matter? <laughs> Look, even if you're a sophisticated uh, corrupt individual, you wouldn't just flat out ask them. You would imply things, you would ask them to read between the lines. You wouldn't come out like a schmuck and just do flat out obstruction of justice in front of everybody. Which is the way they can write a memo about it and tell you no. God, they're so dumb. Th these guys cannot do a cover up. They don't have the intellectual capacity to do a correct cover up. He's going down, lock him up, lock him up. Current and former officials said that Trump either lacks an understanding of the FBI's role as an independent law enforcement agency or does not care about maintaining such boundaries. As we just talked about, the answer is both. He never cared about boundaries. He never followed the law in the first place. All the undocumented immigrants, all the mafia guys, he never got caught. What would he do when he bragged about it during the primaries? He said, I just pay off the politicians. He said, I've been doing this game all along, they're all corrupt, they all take my uh, payments. You know what that's called? That's called bribes, that's also wrong, okay. Finally, you go to Dan Coach. he's testifying today in, in front of the Senate, partly about the bombing in, in the UK and, and partly about uh, this and, and other intelligence matters. He's the director of national intelligence. Uh, and when they asked him, hey, so did this conversation happen? He said, uh, I do believe that information and discussions I've had with the president are something that should not be disclosed. On the other hand, if I'm called before an investigative committee, I will certainly provide them with what I know and what I don't know. Cue it up, man, lock them up, lock them up. Somebody get me handcuffs. <laughs> if the director of national intelligence that Trump himself picked, who was a massive right winger, did not have that conversation with Trump, you know what his answer would be? No, of course not, that's ridiculous. No, the president and I did not have that conversation. He wouldn't say, I can't disclose whether I did or did not have that conversation. But if you bring me in front of the right committee and you force me to answer, oh, I'll tell you. <laughs> Somebody get me handcuffs. <sighs> Pence is warming up in the bullpen. Our reporter Jordan Chatton broke the Donna Brazil story. He was right, she just apologized for it. Help us get more reporters like that. You're the one responsible for that. Thank you, and let's do more right now at tytnetwork.com/go.